Okay, previously we have learned about Jerry Thompson's atomic model. We saw that he tried to explain via his model the periodicity in chemical properties of elements and the atomic spectra. However, he could not provide convincing reasons for them. Also, there was a strong criticism of his model that opposing charges cannot penetrate each other. In the Jerry Thompson model, the electrons were embedded inside the positive mass. Now, in practical experience, there wasn't an instance cited, the one like this. Charges always remain on the surface of the matter. They do not, doesn't penetrate inside a positive charge like this. However, people cannot disprove this model and they could not provide an alternative atomic structure. So this model kept lingering for quite some time. And Jerry Thompson in 1906 got Nobel Prize in recognition to the merit of his experiments for the conduction of electricity by gases. Remember he did cathode ray tube experiment in which electrons used to be knocked out of gases inside the cathode ray tube and hence resulting in the conduction of electricity. That experiment was a landmark experiment and in recognition to the importance of it, Jerry Thompson was awarded Nobel Prize in 1906. Now this model have grave defects, but nobody has a solution for it until 1911 when Rutherford actually gave a new model. Now we are going to see the work of Rutherford and how he came close to the actual structure of an atom. Now Rutherford was a student of J.J. Thomson and he was there with him when J.J. Thomson was conducting his cathode ray tube experiment. He was there with him when he was propounding his plum pudding model of atomic structure and he also accepted that model at that point of time. Now he never disputed it but accidentally he actually discovered or it came close towards the actual structure of an atom. The story began from 1899 when Jerry Thompson discovered alpha, beta and gamma rays. Alpha particle, beta particle and gamma rays. Now he started to work with these particles and he was never in the quest to discover the structure of an atom or to dispute this model. So his purpose was not to find the actual structure. So he was actually working with these particles and these radiations. And somewhere in 1908, he was trying to find charge by mass ratio of alpha particle. Now, alpha particle, as you might know, is helium nuclei, helium atomic number two. Two electrons, two protons, two neutrons. Now, when you knock out both the electrons from helium, helium will have a resultant plus two charge. So when you knock out both the electrons, whatever will be left will be just the nuclei, the nucleus of helium. Helium has nucleus and outside two electrons. If you remove both the electrons, only nuclei will be left. So helium particle can be called as, uh, alpha particle can be called as helium nuclei. Now helium, actually what happens, helium is a very small atom, a very small ion. When a bigger atom like uranium, when that disintegrate or radium, when radium disintegrate, what happens is smaller particles and ray radiations are given out. So the bigger atom with it breaks, smaller atoms are formed, disintegration of bigger atom. So helium alpha particle is one of the radiation, one of the output of the disintegration of a larger atom. Now we are not going into the detail of that, but that phenomena is called radioactivity and alpha particle is one of the product of radioactivity. So we'll not, at this point of time, we'll not look at the source of alpha particle, but somehow alpha particles are created due to radioactivity. And Rutherford was working with alpha particle. And due to some reason, he wanted to calculate the charge by mass ratio of alpha particle. Now, you see, to do that, he thought if he calculate the number of alpha particle, then he will be able to find the charge of alpha particle and mass alpha alpha particle, and hence charge by mass ratio of alpha particle. Suppose there is a radioactive substance and it is disintegrating. So it is giving many many alpha particles. Now if you are somehow if you are able to calculate all the number of alpha particles and you know the initial mass 
of this matter then you can find out the mass of alpha particle by dividing the complete mass by the number of alpha particle this will give us the mass of alpha particle and somehow if we are able to calculate the complete charge on alpha particle and if we know the number of alpha particle then that will give us the charge on each alpha particle and using these two m by q q by m can be calculated the charge by mass ratio can be calculated this was the idea at the back of the mind of rutherford so for this reason he wanted to calculate the number of alpha particle now he had he devised a experimental setup to calculate the number of alpha particle he took a gas tube like this now suppose this is the source of radiation this is a radioactive substance now it is giving out alpha particle and there's a slit to streamline the alpha particle so that alpha particle comes out to the other side of the slit in a straight line now the other side will be filled with gases now the idea was when alpha particle will go to the right side of the slit it will collide with gas when alpha particle is colliding with a gas molecule there will be a strong collision because alpha particle is coming out with very high energy it's a very high energy radiation it's a very high energy particle so there will be a strong collision with the gaseous molecule boom that will result in splashing out of electrons out from the gaseous molecule like this that electron will go to the other side on the other side it will meet electrode now there will be electrode inside just like we had in the cathode ray tube experiment and there will be electric field set up because of that these two electrodes and under the influence of electric field electrons will go towards the right and hit this electrode now this electrode will be connected with wires completing the circuit and there will be a meter to detect current okay now imagine just one alpha particle coming to the right of the slit and it is colliding with gas molecule now it can it can have multiple collisions with various gas molecule because the energy of gas energy of this alpha particle is very high so it can collide with one molecule penetrate through this atom and then go on for collision with other gas molecules that is possible because the energy of this alpha particle is very high now <clears throat> understand one thing the energy of the alpha particle is so high that this atom will not be able to stop this alpha particle alpha, alpha particle is positively charged fine now this mass this mass is also positively charged with negatively charged electron embedded into it there will be some opposition there will be some repulsion between these two positive charges but the energy is so high that theoretically it is easy to find that <clears throat> the alpha particle will penetrate into this atom and will come out from the other side it won't stop so high is the energy now this is expected you, you know you can find the electric field at this point and you can find the kinetic energy of this alpha particle and theoretically you can calculate you can see whether this electric field will be able to stop the alpha particle or not and it is easy to do some calculation and observe that the energy is so high that it will tear into the atom and come out from the other side and this was expected you know so it was thought that due to this collision various electrons from the atom of the molecule of the gas will come out and that electron will go to the other electrode and that electron will go into this meter which will detect the current so what will happen is just think there is one alpha particle there is certain collision and certain number of electrons comes out and this this meter records the movement of that electron now there is next collision and the same event will repeat and the oscilloscope or any other meter will record the movement of that number of electron and then third and then fourth and then fifth now you can get a graph like this initially there is no electron if there is no collision there is no electron coming out there is no electricity now when there is collision there will be some value of current but suppose after the first collision there is some time lag and the second collision happens after some time so after the first collision there is nothing happening so the current value will go down to zero again and when the second collision happens then again momentarily there is some current and again there is no current 
and then third collision gives rise to some value of current and it again go down to zero and the fourth collision like this so there will be periodic repetition of the value of current in the circuit okay now counting these peaks you can know how many alpha particles were there in the system so you can get the number of alpha particle this was the idea so using this theoretical background he Rutherford, the team of Rutherford made this experimental setup in the quest to find out the number of alpha particle. Now Rutherford gave the task to the team to calculate using these readings the number of alpha particle. But the observation was completely different. The observation was these patterns are not regular. Suppose you have one collision like this, there is high value of current and the next one may be giving you very low value of current. And the next one give, can give you very yet another value of current. So it will it will it, it will be erratic pattern rather than uniform. Now the result was shown to Rutherford. Now he was surprised. He was surprised. Now the result was not supposed to be like this. You know why? These two data means the value of current is high and this is low. This means that the collision is resulting in more number of electron in one case compared to the other. Now this cannot happen. You see, if this is the model and if this is the alpha particle which it, which it is and the energy of alpha particle is very high, now no matter how it is colliding with the atom, it will result invariably in splashing out of electrons. Okay, and if the electron, if the energy of alpha particle is remaining same, which is the case for all the alpha particles which is there in the system, then the number with number of gas molecules with which each alpha particle will collide will also more or less more or less remain the same so it is expected that the value of current or the pattern of impulse that it will each alpha particle will generate due to collision should more or less more or less remain the same but here it is completely different it is very very erratic the pattern is very very erratic now this atomic model cannot explain this pattern. It wasn't supposed to be like this because there is no possibility of two kind of collisions resulting in one high value of current and one low value of current. It cannot happen like this if we suppose this model to be true. Now this raised an alarm bell that the model may not be true or we are doing we, we don't know what we are doing. Okay so to confirm it what Rutherford did, he asked the team to repeat the experiment using gold foil or using some other material to see how the alpha particle is interacting with matter, with solid matter apart from the gas. So the experiment, this, this was modified. The gas chamber was made vacuum. There was no gas molecule inside the chamber. It was made a vacuum and gold foil was kept at the slit you know they tried with various metal and then they 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 observed that they can they can get very thin sheet of gold for gold because of its malleability so they did the experiment the final experiment with gold foil and they saw when they put the gold foil inside the at the slit and they had and they coated the other side of the gas chamber with fluorescent substance when high energy particles collide with fluorescent substance then they spark and using microscope it is easy to observe that spark so they modified the experimental setup and they observed what happened was when gold foil was kept here when gold foil was not kept here the alpha particle comes straight at the center when the gold foil was kept then there was deviation in the path of alpha particle and that deviation was very substantial, very high, a lot of few degrees of 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, very high deviation, very high deviation. Now the same experiment was conducted using gas molecule. Now there is no gold foil here. This is a slit and this is space is filled with gas molecules. And again, there is a fluorescent, fluorescent substance coated on the other side to observe the deviation. It was again observed that the gas, gas molecule also deviated the alpha particle. Now the gas molecule also deviated the alpha particle with very high deviation, not just a few degrees, very high deviation. Now this is surprising. This is very surprising because using the J.D. Thompson model, it cannot happen. 
The reason why it cannot happen is, suppose this is the model, this is the atom of J.J. Thomson. If alpha particle is colliding with it, it will penetrate it in and out. Then there is no cause for any deviation. The alpha particle still will move in a straight line. Now, if it is... just grazing the surface of the atom then also theoretically Jerry uh, Rutherford actually calculated the amount of deviation that can happen now, there will be certain deviation suppose that this is the alpha particle when it comes just head-on to the atom there is certain electric field you know this this is a positively charged mass it will have certain electric field now due to this electric field there will be certain force exerted on this alpha atom alpha particle so due, be, due to this this force there will be certain deviation in the path of alpha particle no doubt about it but the calculation says that the deviation should be only of few degrees it will be a minor deviation of two to three degree not very high this deviation is very very large more than 30 degree that amount of deviation cannot happen with this JJ Thompson atom it cannot happen it is not possible now this raised a question as to why the deviation is happening okay now there has to be something 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 you know something else it was very very clear that J.J. Thompson atom cannot provide these explanations. So he asked the team to perform yet another experiment to find out to what extent the deviation happens. He wanted to find the maximum amount of deviation that can happen which was not possible through this experimental setup. So they formed another experimental setup to observe the maximum deviation that can happen.